Welcome, everybody. Uh, Lisa, Rennie, KS, Leslie, David, Alex. Um, so I did post in the M3 chat this morning that uh, we might have an ERI forming. So that's interesting. We see a lot of green here today. And um, if we turn off the grays here on the heat map, you know, it's a nice sea of green. Getting a little bounce here. Bitcoin up 4%, Ethereum 3.28%, and BNB up a little bit. So that's interesting. And uh, we'll certainly look at our uh, charts, but uh, let's see. I'll pull this up. If you guys do have any questions, um, let me know. But here's a one hour and four hour. And um, saw a nice little bounce uh, on this here. So, um, and paying attention to, we haven't looked at this as much lately, the volatility index. Uh, I love this on the one hour and the four hour because when it comes up out of the uh, this bounce like this, and we also have a dynamic ATR going green, uh, looks pretty good. So, uh, any news? We'll pull up some news here. And uh, somebody saying why we're back above 26,000. Uh, you know, again, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. I, I, uh, I'm not going to do a camera this week, by the way. Um, so, let's see if there's anything meaningful back in here. So, basically... Uh, okay, so this is interesting. So Ben Cowan has posted that uh, the Bitcoin is getting its typical death cross rally. So we want to keep an eye on that. Take a look at the uh, the uh, big scary death cross, which isn't really usually all that big of a deal. I um, will we'll look at it, but uh, we'll weigh it. I, I don't think that's something to get too freaked out about by itself. It's uh, what I'm more concerned about is that head and shoulders pattern that's forming. So uh, we do have CPI, PPI this week. And uh, the European Central Bank will announce its interest rate decision. So, you know, um, I think we still go down. I think this we go back and fill that CME gap like we've been saying. But uh, we're just waiting for an excuse, a a.k.a. a catalyst, and we'll see what happens. But uh, um, you know, have to leave that room for maybe that doesn't happen here. So one hour, four hour, the move. This little bounce would have been a nice, a nice swing trade. It just... Um, but from here, you know, it's a bit overbought on the uh, four hour. So let's go back to a, a daily and I'll move this chart to, over to the left where I usually keep it. But um, anyway, uh, let's see. Um, that's all we really need to unpack on the heat map. And uh, we might pull up our checklist here in a minute. I forget why we had H bar up here, but uh, let's go over to our list here for the Crypto Mastery and kind of go down. The list here we do want to look at some more news and just see what's going on in the world uh but the big news here so here's uh you know bitcoin this is interesting though this is the weekly i posted a chart in the uh in the m3 chat showing today was getting an eri and we're not seeing that uh here let me just double check that if i was on a weekly oh you know what Okay, I was wrong on that. I, I maybe you guys corrected me on a weekly time frame. We have an ERI, so that's interesting, and uh, that's right here. So I, I did misspeak uh, on that chat, and so here we have the early reversal indicator. But this is significant. Let's talk about this. We want to look at these kind of larger time frames, and let me open this up a bit. Now, we we are holding on this weekly trend line support, so there is that. And if we zoom out a bit, we've got this all the way back here. Depending on how you draw it, uh, this uh, was strong support a few times back here. What I'll do is do a parallel on it and clone this and just bring it down kind of to the lower edge of this. So if, we, if it does come down to the lower edge of this trend channel, you know, we'd be in that uh, this range here where that CME gap is. So that's uh, potentially of interest here. What we want to look for here is a bounce, though, on a weekly basis. So that uh, to see if we have sort of this right shoulder, you know, um, some are saying this was a double top back here. It's kind of hard to say the upward trend channel has broken or maybe it's just widened. Right. So this is something that we have to keep in mind and see because we don't have that many data points here on the bottom end of this trend channel. And it remains to be seen if we have to widen that thing out or not. But right now where we are is is, is a bullish bounce on this weekly candle off of this uh, trend line support, okay? And uh, we're reminding you also though, very low volume. Look at how the volume just dropped off back in March of this of this year and really has not returned since. So much, much lower volume. 
and uh, we're not seeing uh, anything coming in in a meaningful way to move these markets. But I do like that we're oversold on this weekly time frame. So we're going to want to keep an eye on that going into the end of September and see if we can't start to push higher. Because I think we, you know, if we see this hold end of the week, this is the crux of today's class, this or ERI indicator, if that holds end of the week and uh, going into uh, the following week, we get a TSI start to go green on the weekly time frame. That's very bullish. That points toward a little longer follow through. So any questions on uh, any of that? And then, of course, we'll watch for a uh, signal reversal. Like, you know, we want to catch these when they're low and um, ride them till they're high. So what this means is that uh, we can see multi-week rallies, which we saw back in here from January, where we saw Bitcoin go up 100%. So, you know, I want to alert you to that and make sure that you're aware of that, that we could have a uh, bull little market rally, a multi-week bull rally, which I would be suspect of though, because if it fails any point in here, then it's again, that head and shoulders pattern. So we will we'll unpack that a little bit more tomorrow in the M3 active trader class. So, but that's what I'm watching for. And that's what, you know, we want to kind of keep an eye on. I'll turn off that to ERI for now. And, um, you know, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, let's go back to a, a daily chart, see what uh, is going on there. This is that one hour, four hour and I'm not sure why that's in here twice. So we'll get rid of that. I think I think I do know why. All right, what I'll do here is uh, duplicate this tab. Let's see, you can do it that way. Um, but the better way to do it so that it has a unique URL is to do make a copy here. Um, let's see, <laughs> why is this doing this? Okay, well, I've got this, I've got this, and we've got that. Should not be giving me a hard time with that uh, chart layout, but we'll go to the daily just to see. So basically on the daily, it's kind of going sideways, not a whole lot happening. We are getting a bullish engulfing candle today. So the bounce, what's significant yesterday is that uh, we held and, you know, we uh, Bitcoin was able to hold this. I'll lower it reluctantly, but it's looking like this is the more accurate level right at 25K. So zooming out uh, here, when in doubt, zoom out, we saw, you know, technically that's that 25,300 level, which was so, so important. But, you know, give or take, it's still at 25K is that round number. Major resistance here, resistance here, flipped as support, support. We were watching it at a little higher, 25.3. But uh, it looks like the 25K is sort of that line in the sand. So we dipped below it briefly and closed above it yesterday. So that's significant. We have a bullish engulfing candle here. So what we'd be wanting to see is the confluence of the daily weekly getting an ERI and TSI turn. All right, so <clears throat> can you guys see that? So we have bullish engulfing. If we go to our checklist, we have bullish engulfing candle. It would, depending on where it closes, here's the thing though. We also know that this 21 day EMA, this orange line and the 50 day EMA, the green line act as a resistance. So it's the ice on the lake. And if you have uh, double ice, it's double thick. So point is we need to start breaking above this 21 day and seeing this kind of a, a rally forming. But uh, if you want to get in early, potentially, I would still wait for an ERI on the daily. You know, we had it a couple days ago, but it's, uh, I'd like to see another one here on this candle since we have come lower. And uh, you can see that on their checklist on the advanced setups. We'll look at that in a minute. But here we see the TSI trying to push up above. So some of my favorite setups are when the TSI is going up and the on the daily and the weekly. Because then we were more sure we have a follow through. And it would play into this scenario of pushing up here to form a right shoulder that then comes back down potentially. Uh, or does it hold this trend line support in here? So, you know, again, if you're looking for a tradable opportunity over the next week or two this could be we could be forming one here and but <clears throat> remembering that september is a bit of a typically a down month uh let's see what else do we have though we have our radar mostly green on the radar the daily weekly and the three month just the, the, the one month is uh, bearish on this so <clears throat> if we jump out to a monthly time frame we looked at the weekly let's go to a monthly real quick and zoom out a bit, a uh, bit overbought on the monthly TSI, but this can stay up here for quite some time. So 
Uh, you know, not much to see here on that monthly chart other than the uh, the signal is uh, bearish on the, the radar for some reason. So, and that's mostly because this oscillator is kind of turning over if we were to put a stochastic oscillator on that. So, um, you know, we would really like to see that confluence also another green arrow on the monthly chart. So that would give us, that's going to give us our probably our, our clearest signal when these start to align on the monthly chart as well and uh, to get back into the market. So we caught that here again. We've only seen that happen four times on this monthly trend strength indicator reversal. So those times were, and I'd have to go to a, a different version of Bitcoin to get that longer history. So I'll go over to my master list here and we'll look at this. Uh, and now we can see this a little bit better. So we normally look at this in the class tomorrow, but here we go. So we have, again, the, well, I'd have to go out even farther. So, but now since we're on this, let's make sure to see it through. See it through. This is the one we want to look at. Okay, so the only four times that we've had a bullish ERI on a monthly time frame, that's that green arrow, were at the market bottoms here in 2012. I'll zoom in on this for you guys. If the first time seeing it, and um, and you'd like to get your hands on these indicators, you can go to CryptoMastery.online. But here, uh, once and then twice the market bottom here, third time market bottom here, fourth time this January. So we were calling the bottom in January and had a nice 100% bounce on that. Now we are, does look like markets correcting a bit. We have the bearish ERI that is uh, not very often formed, but here we saw that happen. Here we saw it happen. Here we saw it happen, pull back after this. So the closest pattern I see is more like this one so you know we could overlay these bars where it's just taking a breather what i do like is that we are back above the 50 month exponential moving average now this is a little bit loose uh here it didn't quite hold it kind of went below it but it kind of held here but uh we're back above that or we're holding above the 50 week ema which is significant Okay, so I want to keep an eye on that point is uh, we'd really like to see this uh, red arrow flip back to green, but we may not see that. So it's, uh, again, hence the name early reversal indicator. So we caught it here. Uh, we had the bearish one, went sideways for about six months, and then we had a bullish engulfing candle, and then we rallied hard. So we're going to want to watch that uh, that monthly candle, that monthly chart as well. So any questions, you guys? I see some chats here. Pull that up. And a link. Let's see. The rumor is that, yeah, so we'll talk about that, uh, that the FTX liquidation sales happened uh, over the counter off exchanges. So allegedly Coinbase and Kraken made some purchases directly from FTX that could speak to the lower than anticipated trading vol levels. Yeah, that could, I guess. So it's hard to say with these things. You know, I think part of the trading volumes were in the height of the bull market were these exchanges trading against themselves. And I know that's part of the F SEC's complaints. And so they're, they're cracking down on that inflating trading volume by trading to and from themselves. But certainly if they are doing bigger purchases over the counter, that would not show up uh, on these uh, volumes. So probably a good segue to dive into some news. And let's see. So Galaxy Digital is handling OTC sales, FTC, FTX official assets. So um, uh, some Matic sales yesterday to Coinbase and Kraken, 1 million and 2 million. So it's not insignificant. And uh, it's just really hard to know and how to gauge how these things are going to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, are going to... Um, pan out sorry i got sidetracked this breaking bitboy sues ben armstrong who is bitboy bitboy on stage well anyway uh having some issues there bitboy is uh a super nice guy uh it's got to be hard to be in the the limelight uh all the time so wish him wish him well let's see all right let's pull up some bitcoin news see what's going on here and also uh bitcoin treasuries we'll look at that see if anything's moving there, anything's moving around in big quantity, any whales moving stuff around. MicroStrategy, of course, still the big leader on the privately held basis. <clears throat> 152,000 Bitcoin. And uh, clearly a clear leader, well ahead of Tesla and Marathon. 
and uh, the uh, if you hadn't heard, MicroStrategy, of course, uh, have has plans to issue seven hundred fifty million dollars additional common stock of MicroStrategy to you guessed it, buy more Bitcoin uh, at some point. Uh, they have not started doing that yet, as far as we know. So um, just checking this out, nothing surprising here. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Hang on a second. Uh, okay, right. So, and the trend, slightly down on Grayscale. Looks like that's uh, coming down. I want to unpack this too much because I haven't spent a lot of time on these, actually. I was just looking for some thing to jump out and not sure what we'd find here. Sometimes I just go with a gut feeling. And um, so, but anyway, GBTC, big uh, owner, one of the bigger public holders that has much more than MicroStrategy. Yes, actually, so MicroStrategy is a public company, but uh, the difference is, let me make sure we get that right, is uh, so um, MicroStrategy, a public company, and then we have governments I'm scrolling down here looking for so here are the governments ukraine isn't that interesting ukraine has more than we do uh russia and china have more than us they're just not reporting it by the way yeah so grayscale of course a fund and the etf that's what i was looking for so uh anyway nothing really new to see there let's take a look at the news uh, over here bitcoin 100k 2024 you know we've been saying that i mean 105 is my number for the 1.618 retracement on bitcoin i think you know if we go higher than that 150k potentially over 200k at the 2.618 if things really take off and certainly we could see that with the spot etf but uh we really uh, have to uh, not get married to any numbers here and, uh, and follow it along. Our indicators will tell us when we hit the highs, as, of course, the uh, weekly ERI was telling us to get out at the very market top right there. So our ERI triggered right back here and again here. And, of course, uh, double confirming it with the TSI. So this, just to reiterate this, we will know when to get out the next time because we'll be following our ERI TSI. You know, this was a bit of a double top, but uh, we'll be paying close attention to that. And of course, there's other indicators that we follow that we'll be looking for at that time. But it is encouraging on the weekly time frame as we could have a short term turn balance ERI if we get this TSI going green. And in fact, I would suggest putting an alert on that. Uh, crossing up over 20 and uh, just to know what happens uh, or when that happens and then put it down in uh, the notes here. So TSI, weekly, turn up, and then dash buy, okay? So that's not a recommendation for you to buy. That's just the alert that I'm going to have on here, and I'll be looking to evaluate that with our checklist and say, all right, is this a buy or not? Of course, if we pull up our checklist, uh, is the ERI showing a green up arrow? Well, if we're trading the weekly time frame, it is. Do we have a, a green line on the oscillator? I believe we do. Uh, let's see the that's uh, for this uh, T. So let me just go back to this real quick here. Don't look at that. So ERI and does the ERI oscillator have a green? So that would be this one here and the green line. So that's yes. So then we would be looking for the trend strength indicator. Is it green? And above the 20 line. It's not above the 20 line yet. So this is that cheat sheet. And again, if you want to get this cheat sheet here, you can just go to moonstream.io. And I think it's trade checklist. Uh, yeah, trade checklist. Moonstream.io slash trade checklist. And you can get this um, for yourself. Hopefully that is the correct link. And if you want to find out more about our flagship service, Moonstream, you can find that at moonstream.io. Okay, so uh, okay, so yeah, we are working that the crypto brigade domain is down, so we're working on that. So um, you may not be able to get to that at the moment. Anyway, uh, TSI green above the twenty line has a signal line turned from red to green. Also, no the signal line is still red, so we have an emerging situation. But over the next few days, and I would look at the candle close as of Sunday and see does this hold here? Do we keep the ERI and TSI, and then we sh we should see some some interesting uh, bounce candidates so let's jump back over here uh to I'll close this down and look at some other news here so will this hit 100k we'll see and uh so bitcoin prices fall back traders bracing for fierce moves this week that'll be based on the ppi and cpi 
and the potential of the uh, some sell off from the uh, grayscale rumors. I'm sorry, uh, the uh, FTX rumors. Let's see, uh, Bitcoin price and Coinbase volume showing a rare decoupling. I'm not really that interested in that. Let's see, another big asset manager, Franklin Templeton, filing for a US Bitcoin ETF. So the big boys are lining up. BlackRock ETF, 30 trillion, 30 trillion in new capital. Wow, before it was 10 trillion. We definitely want to see that. Bitcoin up 500% since JP Morgan said it's only used by drug dealers. Way to go, Jamie Dimon. Of course, we know they've been buying it all along. So Bitcoin below 25K, Solana falls on FTX speculation. So why don't we do that? Take a look at uh, some of these other coins. And uh, one of which we will do as uh, Solana. And so let me just turn this uh, phone here into airplane mode so that... Uh, we don't have the interruption. And uh, here we go. So Crypto Mastery here. Solana has got to be in this list somewhere. If not, we will go find it. And let's just do that. So Solana, one of our old favorites, of course. I recommended that in our Moonstream service in August of 2021 at $35. It's back down to $18. So, um, you know, we will have another chance at Solana. Uh, this uh, speculation here... The speculative price uh, has not panned out, but I was speculating this could pan out. So I uh, will sort of move this out a bit. If we see uh, what we were looking for on Solana's break back above the 50-day EMA, haven't seen that and um, bit oversold. This is the weekly time frame, so I want to keep an eye on uh, on this. But as far as a daily time frame, uh, Solana not really doing much. This the news saying it's a big sell-off. It's not doing much. It's just kind of holding this range. Uh, all red on the radar, though, I would not be buying Solana here at these levels. Actually, let me go to a daily chart because I had a two-day chart, but all red on the radar still. So all red is, is a sell. I would not be uh, buying any Solana at this point. So, you know, we want to see it kind of hold and bounce off key support levels. And so that's what our indicators are so good at, ERI, TSI, Signal, and Bell. And uh, let's see, FTX unveils 3.4 crypto holdings. Yes, yeah, so they have 1.16 billion Solana. And that's a lot. And so if this gets dumped on the market, uh, you know, we'll look for lower prices, but look for some bargain prices. You know, it's it's funny how Black Friday, we all go running out to buy stuff because things are on sale. But in crypto, everyone's running away from uh, things when it's going down. So um, keep an eye on that. I didn't realize it was 1.6 billion Solana. That is quite a bit. That's double uh, how much Bitcoin is possibly going to hit the markets. And uh, <clears throat> but again, how much of this is being done OTC so it doesn't crash price. So I think that that's going to be we'll see. We'll see more of that. I think it's, hmm, you know, it's a tough one. I, I'm not going to speculate on that. I think they'll do some of both and it will get absorbed either way. So we've already said, you know, you've heard me say 100 times, show me the chart. I'll tell you the news. I still think we push up higher here uh, on the uh, the short term bounce. We fill that right shoulder and then likely come back down and fill that to CME gap at 20K. And then we run higher uh, and hopefully not back down to retest the uh, lows. So anyway, so a lot of Bitcoin experience declines as FTX prepares for liquidation. So let's unpack this a little bit. We don't want to discount it too much here. And uh, so it's come down. So Bitcoin, we know Solana. But these are so the biggest holdings, Bitcoin, ETH, Solana. Uh, also may see some downside on USDT. Uh, that's a stable coin, obviously, XRP. I don't know. I think probably the biggest, uh, we'll, we'll see the biggest drop in Solana. And, um, you know, but that'll be absorbed at some point. Yeah, FTX estate expected to seek approval, liquidate 3.4 billion in crypto. So, um, and then some speculation on the FTX relaunch. I don't know. I think that brand is so well damaged. That would not be a good idea, but uh Fortune Magazine reported FTX Estate had approached 75 potential bidders uh, about the possibility of relaunching the bankrupt crypto exchange. I just think the reputational damage is so much that they that uh, they'll have a real tough time. FTX 2.0. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Uh, I I think they would uh, be better off starting a new exchange, but we'll see what happens. Although there was a lot of work in setting up the company, and uh, although they would need a new entity for sure. 
We'll see what happens here. Outcrown the bankrupt proceedings, bankruptcy proceedings, and the relaunch shape the future trajectory of FTX and the position in the industry. Features uh, featured image of I stock chart. And that's not important. Um, all right, guys, nothing really to see here other than what we just unpacked. All right, so go back to the charts. Let's look at some more news here. Uh, Baron's not going to let me see the article, uh, so we'll skip that. Uh, Coin Telegraph, our old friends at Coin Telegraph. Good editorials don't make you pay for things. So it's a good source. Uh, we can also look at the Daily Hoddle, a couple other places here. Um, so he says this person, uh, I mean, this is no huge shock uh, that we're heading into the having folks that's coming in April, 2024, usually prices have rise up into the having. And so that should drive prices up over hundred K, uh, will it, and how far the big wild card are the spot ETFs, of course. And, uh, we'll have to see what happens. This is interesting. Binance execs exodus. Okay. That means executives leaving the company. NASDAQ trade AI orders and SPF losses bail appeal. I mean, I'll open that up briefly, but Bitcoin faces a ton of resistance after daily price gains pass. Nothing really there. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Pardon me. So Bitcoin all time high 2025. Yeah. I mean, um, that's no stretch. We've been saying that also. Let's see, BlackRock, 10 trillion. We have a headline up here that somehow they have 30 trillion. And, uh, but look at this. So this is interesting. The overall cryptocurrency market cap is 2 trillion. Now, that I don't agree with because we can see it's just below 1 trillion. And uh, so if BlackRock has 10 trillion in assets and they allocate 10% of it into crypto, that would double the total crypto market cap. So let's pull that up and take a look at this. So bear with me here. Uh, and uh, KS will get to your comments here shortly. So let's take a look at the total market cap here briefly because they, I don't know how they're getting that uh, 2 trillion market cap. It's Now the good news is, and you heard me sounding the alarms yesterday, we dipped below a trillion dollars. We're back up above a trillion dollars. So our alarm, our alarm to sign and sound, sound the alarm. I'm going to put it down a little bit below these two wicks. Because if we start breaking new lows, uh, then we've got then we've got problems. But we had it bounce up. That was a bit of a fake out. So we'll say at 977, you, you know, let's say 975, just to avoid any other fake outs. And I'll do this as a uh, sell, just to kind of give me an idea. Markets are falling. Okay. But the total market cap is just back above $1 trillion. Again, if BlackRock with their $10 trillion and potentially more comes in and allocates 10% into crypto, that could double the total market cap size here. Do you guys understand that? So, you know, <clears throat> we are sort of looking at uh, on this chart too, we are sort of looking at this head and shoulders which could, uh, we could make the case of this. So in this scenario on the total market cap, right? So uh, we are getting some mixed signals. Some said this was a double top, but this was a bit lower. You know, what if this is the the right shoulder, guys? I mean, that's, uh, we don't know. This is market psychology. If it were to break, however, these is more like a double top though, isn't it? Hmm, that's a tricky one. However, the, uh, the head to the neckline if we wanted to get some idea where this could go on a neckline break, the question is, where's the neckline though? That's a bit tricky. So if I were to redraw this, if this was a head and shoulders, it's, it's a tricky one because you could make the case that this was the neckline potentially. So a break below this, which is happening would put us down to eight four eight hundred and forty million. If we say this is the neckline, that puts us down into this buy zone, which is frankly where I have, have drawn this. So if we get down to seven hundred seventy billion, that's a great buy zone, I believe, uh, for starting to accumulate. When our indicate starts, indicators start to show that it's time to get back in. Okay, so it's a bit uh, tough to read that one. At any rate, let's keep going here. And um, if we look at total market cap too, that's everything except Bitcoin. That's, of course, lower. And the total market cap uh, to over. We start looking and getting into some of these ratios here. Uh, I guess that's uh, somewhat interesting too. It's uh, rolling over the total market cap to divided by the uh, total 
market cap gives this uh, sort of ratio. Uh, we don't want to get too far into this. Total DeFi, though, also rolling over. So uh, things are not looking great here, everybody. So we're just going to have to keep an eye on that. But the point of this is, if that big old BlackRock comes in and puts a whole bunch of money in there, then uh, these guys are wrong, though. The overall crypto market cap is $2 trillion. They're, They've doubled it. So whoever wrote that's incorrect. Money won't come in. BTC demand will increase when the supply is increased as price goes up. So this is no huge stretch there. I'll go back to the comments here. Um, let's see. FTX says one of the main backers behind Solana. Yes, true. The 1.6 uh, 1 worth of Solana was their stake in the project. Now they're forced to sell, liquidate. Okay, so let's go back to that and uh, look at that a little bit clearer. On Solana, I do have it in this list somewhere, but let's see, where did Solana go? All right, we'll pull it up again. Here it is up top. Well, that's the Solana Perpetuals. I'll pull up the uh, underline just uh, because, and we'll just pull it up here on uh, Coinbase. Yeah, <clears throat> all red on the radar. Not looking good. It's already been selling off. Uh, it's in a downward trending trade channel. So would not try to catch a falling knife here. So would not be looking to buy Solana here at this levels. Uh, so, um, but yeah, that 1.6 1.16 worth of Solana was how much uh, FTX had in the project. And then there's that other one. You know, if we wanted to pull up the SRM project, which was a derivatives exchange, uh, also on um, is basically backed by FTX. But look, it looks like it's been delisted here. Uh, SRM actually, so it's still on Kraken. It's on BitMEX. So uh, here's this uh, just bleeding out completely. I wonder if this will be saved because this is sort of like a DYDX. <clears throat> but I would keep an eye on SRM depending on what happens to it. Uh, still in a downward trending channel. But if it gets back above 10 cents, I would... I'm going to put a buy alert on this crossing up 10 cents and I'll put a, a possible buy. Why? Because that would be breaking out above its uh, tr downward trending channel. So we want to catch those early. It's currently all red on the radar. If that thing goes green, uh, might be wor worthwhile picking some up. And if it gets down in this 10 cent range, uh, certainly we'd, uh, or sorry, 0 0.01 cents. Uh, or breaking above the trend channel at 10 cents, then th that's why I have an alert set there. You know, so uh, these assets may get picked up, although CSRM, I don't know. This is where I would, they probably want to go do your homework. Go look at the GitHub. Are they still pushing uh, code updates, et cetera? Is this project still alive? Right. So let me just finish the comment here. As long as Solana survives as a project network, we're back to Solana, right? So the FTX stash is actually liquidated. Could be some margin, uh, sorry, bargain basement prices on Sol. Yeah, Solana, SRM, all of these. So here, we'll go back to Solana. Should we put SRM back on our watch list? Let's do that uh, on the Crypto Mastery. So Solana is there and or sorry srm is there and then we'll go back it gets uh solana on here too so add to this watch list it's already on the crypto mastery watch list so uh there we have it but um yeah i would expect that comes down uh farther so let's disregard this because this is not uh timely with the news that uh it this really needs to bottom and I, I would i think we'd rather see sort of this kind of w double bottoming pattern that's what we'd want to see Oops. Uh, here to there. Shoot. <laughs> Disregard that. Uh, cool. You get the idea. Uh, all right. I'll just kind of Jerry rig that to go higher. All right. So, uh, distribute so closer to the top. Yeah. I mean, they're, um, just to finish that thought, KS says, or their stake, FTX's stake is quietly acquired over the counter by the likes of Coinbase and Kraken to distribute and sell closer to the top in the next bull cycle. I mean, certainly that would be a smart move and maybe some micro strategy, Michael strategies getting in there, right? We just call him Michael strategy, Michael Saylor, micro strategy, Michael strategy. There you go. It has been, maybe he's been buying some of that and that will come out next month on the K ones for micro strategy. We'll see. Uh, BTC dominance, lovely upwards parallel channel. We'll look at that, Alex. But, uh, but you know, this is a valid point. So KS is making, you know, the whole Wyckoff distributions, you know, clearly and most likely these are getting bought up here and accumulation is happening. 
So uh, let's just kind of go up our list here a little bit here. I wanted to look at Syscoin, OGN. All right, nothing to see there. But uh, yeah, so, you know, we'll have to see how this plays out. We do have economic data this week still. So <clears throat> let's see. So let's, uh, let's go and take a look at BTC dominance. And where do we have that? Right here. Uh, so yeah, so Bitcoin dominance on the move again, pushing back up. It's 50 day moving average. So it looks good and a nice upward trending channel. Thank you, Alex, for pointing that out. This is worth keeping an eye on you guys. And how high can it go? Bitcoin will lead the next rally. Uh, we know that because uh, ETH dominance, which I thought was going to turn higher, has kind of broken its structure here. But we have uh, we have this. Uh, we, we need to see and want to see Bitcoin dominance kind of back above the 56 zone right uh which is where it was back here in 2021 right up above these levels and so uh let's take this off here super alt season not necessarily that's not necessarily valid but i'll just redraw this as kind of a sweet spot zone where it has to get back above it where things are going to start really running but you know we have we have to get we need to get back and hold above this sort of 49 percent level which we are so that's interesting bitcoin dominance holding well <clears throat> eth dominance just kind of going sideways broke breaking market structure on the if we go to a five day we have looked at this in the past right this nice chevron forming however <clears throat> it broke this uh nice upward trending channel and it's just been going sideways. So that's why I don't think ETH is going to lead this uh, next rally like we once thought. So let's take a look at anything else moving in these markets here. Let's just finish the news, then we'll go over to the uh, what's moving. But yeah, how BlackRock ETF, 30 trillion in new capital will impact the Bitcoin price. See, this thing could shoot up the price just a big green candle overnight. We have seen that. And then within a week, we could see this thing really, really push higher. And so that's why people are accumulating Bitcoin and dollar cost averaging, because you don't want to miss that when, if, and when that happens. The implications of potential Bitcoin exchange traded fund. This is a spot fund, by the way. So we had the futures based uh, ETF came out right at the top of the market. So we have talked about that as well. So if we look at Bitcoin uh, on the uh, back of the market peak right here, well, what was announced here was the futures ETF, but those are cash settled, did not equate to higher prices. This was a sell on the news type of event. And certainly that's what happened. Uh, however, if we'd see approval of the BlackRock, which is a spot ETF, that would mean they would come in and buy a lot of it uh, on the open market. You know, I guess it remains to be seen how much would be bought over the counter, but uh, the news would certainly push higher uh, based on that. So uh, let's just see um, and and continue to push it higher. That is the catalyst that we need. If giants like BlackRock come to the picture with access to 30 trillion, it could lead to a seismic shift in the space. There's the TLDR on that. That's the news of today. And, you know, look, it's likely going to happen. It's just a matter of when. And, uh, you know, here's kind of the sentiment. Anxious Bitcoin investors wonder, is the finally bottom is the bottom in? And uh, the answer is it doesn't matter. It's a good place to be dollar cost averaging. And uh, now this, though, somebody's saying, how old is this article? Oh, uh, this is 2018. I'm like, this, this, six, disregard this. This is just bad news. Uh, I don't know why that even headline came up. That's very old. Okay, so um, Bitcoin Magazine, Binance. So Binance leaving, losing some executives, it sounds like. And Holders oh, Digest. Uh, okay, I don't know. I don't know why. Let's see. 10 key execs. Probably they don't want to fight the SEC. I'm not going to read into that too much. Uh, and NASDAQ receives SEC approval for AI-based trade, or trade orders. That's interesting. Uh, I, I read that because... Uh, more ways to screw the little guy investor because you know keep in mind everybody a an ai beat the best chess player in the world 20 30 years ago so we are up against some of the most significant ai out there that's why these markets are so hard to trade on a swing trade but uh still that is our advantage swing trading following the footsteps of the giants and uh you know trying to catch the macro moves with the elephants and the whales as well so, but we are up and increasingly up against uh, these AIs. So what does it say? Extended life order, midpoint extended life order, which is AI driven order type 
uh, we're going to want to unpack that. So it's dynamic. It'll use AI to update, essentially recalibrate in real time, aka screw the little guy investors. Uh, you might as well go buy a t-shirt with a bullseye on it because this is what's coming and happening. Uh, I hear the future of AI is different. AI is to predict what the basic AIs are going to do and so on and so forth. Here, NASDAQ says, hey, when I'm reading this sentence, the translation is screws the little guy. Okay, NASDAQ says the dynamic MELO demonstrated a 20% increase in fill rates and an 11% reduction in markouts during its research and testing. Well, it's not completely bending us over, uh, but but this is when you read uh, news like increased profitability for a hedge fund so and so. That's basically the AI's uh, making money at our expense. Increase in fill rates uh, means this is um, getting taking more trades. I guess I have to unpack that a bit. Midpoint extended life order. I don't know. I guess that just means it stays on the order books a little bit longer rather than jumping in and out, which the the bots currently do. So uh, appellate judge denies Sam Bankman Freed's request for immediate bail release. Good. SEC delays ARK Invest 21 shares. Uh, yeah, so this is interesting too. New, see a new trend, ARK Invest uh, filing for a spot a ETF uh, for ETH and uh, also... Uh, 21 shares, but ARC is the, the bigger one here. So they're going after that bigger appreciation because ETH, if it really runs and it sits just under 2000 now ish and it goes to 50,000, that's a much better ROI. I'm not saying it will, but some are suggesting it could go to 50K. And uh, and so we'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, either way, this is kind of bullish. Grayscale asks SEC to meet on the way forward for the Bitcoin ETF conversion. So, um, and they're suggesting that to Grayscale saying that uh, is no legal reasoning to block the conversion. And uh, there's a big siren outside the window. Uh, so anyway, the, the more of, of this happens, you've heard this analogy I've said before, we're in round four of a 12 round heavyweight fight you know, between SEC and crypto. And for Gensler won the first two rounds, but you know, we have some, we, we've been winning the last two rounds. The, uh, the court withholding and forcing the SEC to make a decision, get off your butts, make a decision. So that was one of them. And then the uh, partial win from XRP. So these, you know, the wins are starting to line up. And so the, what they're saying is the SEC has no grounds for treating GBTC differently for Bitcoin futures whose filings the commission has previously approved. And so their argument is that they will not lead toward uh, manipulation, which is kind of the leading argument against spot ETF. But basically, the argument is solid. And we reviewed the actual filing, basically saying that, hey, look, if the futures ETF has supervisory, you know, if the CFTC has supervisory powers over the futures-based ETF, well, then it has the same the powers to supervise on the spot ETF, therefore not dangerous, therefore more likely to be approved at some point. Okay, uh, so, and then this is interesting, uh, DeFi is the future. So DeFi is uh, sort of these, instead of your Binance's and Coinbase's, which are CFI, centralized financial exchanges, DeFi is going to be more like your Uniswaps and uh, and another good one called DYDX, which is uh, basically a DeFi uh, DEX that will allow you to have do swing trades and have that similar UI. If you're not familiar with DYDX, uh, we'll pull up the chart here in a minute. But uh, basically, they're saying the next bull run may very well make DeFi bigger than CFI. Very interesting. Very interesting. So we'll want to keep an eye on those. All right. So that's about all we have uh, time for on that. We'll take that away. Any other Bitcoin news? Let's do this. And um, we'll pull up Crypto Panic and see if there's anything there. And But I've got about 30 minutes left in the class. Let's see, Bit, uh, BitGet earmarks another $100 million for global expansion. Yeah, I don't know. These, these uh, you know, these offshore exchanges... Be very careful of them. They are the ones by bit, bit get. They are using advanced AI to basically against you to uh, move markets, move price. Uh, there's definitely market manipulation. I saw and an evan evidence that and uh, screenshotted that a year ago when by bit was moved price around and uh, just kind of blatantly take stop hunting and um, 
anyway, we won't get into that, but there might have been some shenanigans going on in the markets from FTX as well, moving prices, et cetera. So uh, let's see, FTX holdings hang over Solana, communities undisturbed. We'll take a look at that. We've kind of unpacked that, but we see anything else. Fear of FTX liquidations mount, which crypto is most at risk? So this is the big uh, news. Uh, Coinex exchange allegedly hacked. Uh, not good there. And 27 million worth of crypto moved. Just, you know, these things are often, you just can't help but ask, is this an inside job? Anyway, uh, crypto exchange, uh, Coinex allegedly hacked 27 million. All right, is what it is. Uh, how that plays out, we don't know. <clears throat> Here's that uh, FTX holdings, Hangover Solana, communities undisturbed. Uh, so let's take the uh, counter side of this. We looked at the charts. This FTX estate holds staggering 1.5 billion. Earlier it was 1.16 billion in Solana network assets. So maybe some of it are assets on the Solana blockchain, not Solana itself. However, Solana community shrugging off concerns. Uh, right. Well, you know, I mean, I think Solana survives. It's venture backed. They've got a good blockchain. You know, even if they always maintain a 15% market cap of Ethereum, which some have speculated, uh, you know, that that would long term be a good uh, possible holding. But um, uh, this person saying FTX about to dump X 680 million worth of Sol. Let's see. FTX expected to receive approval to look at the following assets on September 13th. So that would be tomorrow. Um, so, okay, we want to be careful out there, see what happens. This may be a buy on the news event because everyone expects it to dump, expects it to dump rather. And um, uh, they're saying, so others advocate calm, saying exchange will likely sell these gradually. This way, FTX would avoid tanking Saul's price, of which there's, I mean, that makes sense. They, they don't want to dump the price, so they're not going to probably dump it all at once. All right, so FTX collapse. Consequently, biggest black swan ever endured put Saul at $8. Yeah, and that's kind of what it's saying is that the, <clears throat> the worst is behind us. And we're worried about $600 million that will be sold over the course of the next five years. So... Yeah, so that's kind of that argument. This has largely been factored in. All right, any points, any comments? Let's see. Uh, KS says, would BlackRock go as far as allocating up to 10% of assets under management to crypto at this stage? I, I don't know, KS. I mean, I, I think probably not all in, but uh, if, uh, you know, if they have 30 trillion and not 10 trillion, you know, I think they would come in with a significant stake. And uh, one to three percent, you're saying for safety reasons, yeah, you know. But uh, still, that would be if it's, you know, if it is thirty trillion. Let's say it's just, just ten trillion. Ten percent would be, you know, um, one trillion. A hundred million would be one percent. So three hundred million would be three percent. That's still that's a pretty sizable uh, allocation there. And then of course, uh, with Michael Saylor coming, it was seven hundred fifty million. Um, you know, I would I would think BlackRock comes in a little bit bigger, just so they're not behind the eight ball. Let's see. Uh, you're saying the Mark Yusko interview, Mark was discussing in terms of institutional allocations. Yeah, that was a great interview uh, that will be public uh, sooner than later. If you're watching the replay, look for the Future of Crypto Summit. Should be online sometime September, October. By the way, if you like the content and you're watching on YouTube, please like the video. Go ahead and do that now. It does help us put more content out like this. And uh, subscribe. Hit that bell so you get notified when we put these out. So BlackRock does not need to collateralize, or sorry, not need to allocate 10% for a meaningful stay considering their size. Yeah, exactly. But so that's a big question mark. I would say I would take the midpoint, KS. I'd say they might go 5%. Because again, Michael's strategy <laughs> coming in at 750 million more, well, they're going to want to have half 500 million, I would say at least. So that would be 5% of a trillion dollars if I did my math, math magician skills there, right? So I believe that's correct. 10 trillion, 1 trillion is 10%, 500 million is 5%. There you go. Easy math. So um, yeah, I would say, you know, hold, you know, hold me to that. I reserve the right to be wrong, just uh, speculation there. But with that uh, in, out of the way, let's kind of take a look. We've unpacked the uh, news pretty well here. 
and yeah, that's all we have to look at. So let's kind of take a look at some some other things here. We can pull up the what's moving. You know, let's look at our indicators. Let's pull these up here. So Bitcoin uh, again on the daily basis. Uh, this is the five day rather. So again, we want to look at the week. Watch that weekly ERI. But if we want to go over to the crypto pair screener, I want to be on a daily chart. See what's moving today. And uh, <clears throat> so we'll go ahead here into our filters. And uh, actually, where's the filters I like? Overview, performance. No, uh, somewhat, always a bit of a challenge here, finding the right filters I don't want to use. Okay, here. Percentage change. Uh, I'll keep that. Exchanges, yes. High, low. I don't need high, low. Technical rating I want. Volume I'll keep. Volume percentage change. I don't need those so much. And then on the actual filters for the uh, exchanges here. Okay, that's what we just changed. Exchange this one. All right, so uh, I'm just going to look at, to narrow it down, we'll just do like a Coinbase and maybe a Kraken. So that uh, since we can't do the KuCoin easily here in the U.S. anymore, just trying to get the big buyers of the big ones. So with a spell, not familiar with what this spell is. It's up big today. Might be one to keep an eye on, I think. Uh, but uh, don't have an ERI. It's breaking up above this 50-day um, moving average. I would keep an eye on it. I'll put an alert on this if it continues to push higher. So not sure what they do. You guys can check that out. That's a strong buy. And, um, but we don't have our indicators lining up here. We're kind of uh, in a, a cell sequence here on the trend indicator. So spell coin, whatever they, spell token, whatever they do. Uh, we've got air.euro. Let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see. Uh, rareable kind of moving with the uh, euro pair. All right, that is up 14%. Might be one to keep an eye on there. I uh, don't see that we have an ERI on that unless I open this up here for you guys. Well, we kind of have a bit of this on Rarible. Let me see if we can pull it up on the USDT pair because I only see it on the um, the the Rarible pair or the uh, sorry the Euro pair. So if we do Rary USD, let's see what happens here. Yeah, not as much. Uh, indicators not looking good. So if you like trading the euro, you could do that. But on the the US dollar pair, that sold off quite a bit. So it's uh, I would I would avoid this. And we don't have our uh, ERI. TSI is going green a little bit, but the ERI was back here and it's selling off. So I would avoid that. All right. Uh, what else do we have here? We've got uh, YGG. Not really familiar with that. We have an ERI, but not a TSI. TSI is still red, and so that's disqualifying. There we've got. Uh, Rook, take a look at Rook Euro. Mm, don't really like that. I uh, don't like that chart. We have Bitcoin Cash. So showing some interesting things here. We have an ERI. All right, guys, both Bitcoin Cash. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this. I don't really trade it often. Uh, the problem here is it's in a downward trending channel. You know, certainly if you wanted to set an alert above this, we have an ERI. We have a TSI going green. We have a signal turning green but kind of going sideways. We don't have the slope that we'd want to see, that upward slope and traje trajectory. But we are getting a key on the trend indicator. I, I don't love it, but it's worth watching Bitcoin Cash and set an alert up in this range up here above that trend resistance. <clears throat> All right, other than that, let's just see, go through here. We have uh, Air USD. Uh, let's see. Okay, this, this looks a bit overbought here. We're on the daily had a nice ERI, had we been watching it, had a, a bullish ERI there and uh, had the trend strength indicator TSI go green here. So we missed this. This was about five days ago. It would have been a great trade. TSI signal green and had the bell five days ago. But uh, on the five count, we'll have our first sell signal. And then so, you know, this might go higher, but I'd say this is kind of run its course. Let's open it up a bit. Keep an eye on this, though. Uh, all right. Well, um. You know, it's kind of looks like it's breaking out of a long, just just so the volume has picked up. I have to say, it looks interesting. Let me turn this ERI off and kind of get a trend channel on there for us. I mean, it's you know we 
problem is that it's uh, it, it's, re- it's going to reject most likely up in here. If we turn on our Bollinger Band, it's already up above the upper Bollinger Band. So this likely pulls back. I'd, I'd say keep an eye on it. I'm going to add it to our watch list. So uh, we can keep an eye on that. And where would we want to see this thing? You know, if it breaks back above this level again, out outside of the trend channel, I'll put my alert right outside that trend channel. And that's how we can use these. All right. So uh, moving right along. Anything else? Anything you guys want to look at here? We can do that. I've got Rarible here on the USD. We already checked that out. That sold off. So I'm just now into this, the buy ratings. We've got Rook. We've got GAL, not Gala Games, but what is GAL dollar? Uh, just not really looking terribly exciting. Nothing's looking terribly exciting right here. Uh, so what we could do, though, is look down. We've got Render Token Euro kind of on the sell side. Well, this is still the buy side. Uh, let me see if I can follow up the Render USD and some of these other ones here just kind of in the doldrums these are sell and buy is not strong buy or strong sell but here's render token on the us dollar pair uh so what do we have here it's 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 hitting rejection at the 50-day ema that's that thicker ice and that upper bollinger band so just not really looking terribly good it says buy what our indicators show up but we don't have a bullish eri we're overbought on the tsi so these are the scenarios to avoid Okay, so what we could look for are some that are showing strong sell. Maybe these are at pullback zones. So I'm going to go all the way down here in the bottom. And maybe let's do this. We'll sort these by strong sell, see if any of these are looking to are looking to bounce potentially. Uh, all right. There we go. Strong sell. And what do we have? Uh, these are ones I'm not familiar with here. J A S M Y. We did hear about. We looked at that recently. That looks like it's going to continue lower. Uh, Ocean is one of the AI coins that we were watching, but this chart just doesn't look terribly good. Uh, if it's below the 21 to 50 day, this likely is coming down lower. So I don't see any great bounce opportunities here. Just skimming through this, we've got Algorand. You know, I do like to stick with the uh, the better projects, but all red on the radar. So we don't want to be trying to catch a falling knife here. So Algo is in sell, strong sell territory. So we have Polkadot, G, uh, British Pound. See if we can have dot here on the USD. Uh, we have this, uh, this one here. I haven't looked at in a while. Alice. Okay, that also looks like it's going lower. Bearish ERI. And... Uh, you know, the ice, the 21 day EMA has to get above the ice. It's below both of these. These are coming down lower. So uh, Badger, Dow, I haven't looked at that in a while. These charts just not showing any signs of strength. I would I would exercise caution, stay out of these markets. We have the economic data tomorrow. So we'll see what happens with that. So let's do this. I'll put away the uh, screener there. We can jump over to our crypto mastery list, by the way, and just see, we can jump around here to see some things. Uh, do you guys have anything you want to look at? Let's take a look at our basket here. We had compound. Let me turn off this Bollinger Band so this thing will open up. Uh, compound, looking back, come back down again. All right, we're waiting for our ideal setups. ERI, TSI, Signal, and Bell. We don't have green on the TSI. We move on. Uh, we looked at Fox Network, you know, putting in a nice rounding bottom. So this chart actually looks pretty good, you guys. We said that last time. So Fox Token, it's holding this nice rounding bottom. We do have an ERI on the daily basis and we're waiting for the TSI to come back up. So on this is one where I would put a, an alert on the TSI crossing up above 20 and that would be a potential buy and uh, and looks like a pretty good chart. So we say possible buy on TSI green. Okay, so you can say whatever you want on these. These are the alerts that'll come up when when they trigger. So it's good to have them meaning, be meaningful Sometimes you'll have a whole bunch of alerts go off all at the same time. But look at this volume coming in here with Fox Token. So again, I, I would be cautious here. We did sort of put on a pseudo trade before with a stop loss down below. So if you took that trade, it's down a bit. If you wanted to take the trade now-ish because it's on this kind of curving bottom, you know, with this uh, tight stop loss on it. Why do we like this? Because look at the upside, 238 risk reward potential on this Fox Token. So we don't make buy sell recommendations in this class. If you want to find out more about our M3 Active Trader, where we do give specific buy recommendations and sell recommendations and uh, levels, you can find out more about that at moonstream.io slash M3. 
And uh, so if you just go again to moonstream.io slash M3, you can find out about this flagship program. You get all the indicators, by the way, I've concluded. And we have weekly classes, daily updates in a private signal group. And you got me, yours truly here. And uh, daily updates, as you can see. So just a quick commercial here for uh, Moonstream Active Trader. This is our sort of highest level active trading course. And you get our Crypto Mastery Indicators included. Uh, you can get started with this for a monthly fee. And you can learn more at moonstream.io. All right. So uh, with that, uh, what else do we want to look at, you guys? Uh, anything else? I'm not hearing anything in the peanut gallery. So let's keep going, looking through our Crypto Mastery kind of a list here we looked at solana and uh but you know hint hint look at this shapeshift fox token it now just does not mean it can't go lower but this does look like a pretty interesting chart and risk reward is there so what would you do let's say you did buy some last week and bought some today and it went lower could you dollar cost average and buy and accumulate more for the inevitable bull run yeah potentially you could all right uh question somebody wants to look at h bar uh, david you must be the one who keeps bringing it up because the chart is uh it was up there when we first loaded uh for hedera we'll look at that here in a moment let me just skim through the rest of these uh solana we talked about likely double bottoming uh, where would i like solana i'd like it down at 15 dollars. Uh, let me just set an alert here when i would recommend doing that having maybe even put a limit buy order in uh, at $15 because, hey, this you know, look, if you were upset that you missed Solana at 35 when I recommended it uh, back in 2021 and it went to 600, uh, then, or sorry, it went up 657%. It went up to 250. You know, these are, these are these chances to be buying it at, if you can buy it at $15 or even down at $9, DCA, dollar cost averaging is the name of the game. I would be looking to buy it at nine dollars, twelve dollars, fifteen dollars, and uh, and then on the way up here when it breaks to new buying strength above thirty dollars. If you're getting an adjusted basis price of around fifteen dollars and it goes up to three hundred again, you guys, that's a twenty x, and that's the name of the game. So uh, let's take a look at uh, Rune. Uh, Rune had a nice little bounce here, all red on the radar. I would say uh, this here. Uh, is uh, we don't have holding tank uh, designations here. So we'll just run through these. So INJ, INJ is held up fairly well, though. Look at this. It really hasn't sold off much. And uh, and it's breaking above, you know, it's downtrending channel. And I would suggest that uh, to keep an eye on, on this one, because if it was, as soon as we can identify a new upward trend channel, those are our best friends. Trend is your friend. And so if this holds and starts to turn higher, we want to ride this. So keep INJ on your radar. That looks like a pretty good one. I wouldn't be buying it here necessarily. I would be waiting for ERI TSI. TSI is waiting. ERI is giving a signal. Again, you can watch the weeklies on these for their longer term timeframes, but that's red still. So I'd wait on that. But uh, interesting chart. We've got Polygon Matic still heading lower. Uh, Polygon, you know, again, where would you like to own it? Uh, you know, since we're down below this zone, I would say your liquidity pocket here, your buy zone on Polygon is down in the 30 to 40 cent range. And uh, and then if it comes back lower, lower dollar cost averaging, I mean, honestly, the best strategies here are to wait for it to turn, wait for it to bottom and start to bounce, get it below its 21 and 50 day EMAs like that. I don't like to buy and go long when these are, things are coming down and it has the double ice. Again, think of the 21 and 50 day EMAs as ice, that thicker ice. If you see double ice right here, it's going to be harder to get above. It did get above and that should have held, but it fell down through the ice. So now we've have this 21 wake moving average acting as the ice, keeping this down below. Uh, so that's the analogy that uh, we like to talk about. All right, XRP, if you're an XRP fan, you know, this this upward trend channel kind of failing here a bit. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't like to redraw these. Not a very high, high sloping pattern. So is XRP ready to go? I don't see our indicators lining up. So I would say I wouldn't, I would not be buying here. Same thing with Filecoin heading down 21 day coming down. Uh, if we look at some of these other ones, we've got quick swap here, possible double, double bottom. You know, this would be a somewhat risky play, but if you waited for our ERI, TSI, all of our indicators to line up, then that would be a possibly good trade, but it's all red on the radar. So I'd probably avoid that. 
All right, so Stellar Lumens here, kind of in an uptrend. We have a bearish ERI TSI, so you wouldn't want to be buying into that uh, based on this, but it, it does have a nice bottoming pattern here. And, and look, at some point, we're going to look back and say, hey, we should have paid attention to these. These are bottoming patterns. So uh, this one here, if you like INJ or XLM rather, you know, may look back and say, hey, that was an early signal. This was a good time to get in. When in doubt, zoom out. I think Stellar Lumens looks okay. I just have not done well with it in the past. So I, I'm leery of uh, XLM uh, personally and in trading it myself. So, but some people really like Stellar Lumens. Here we've got Immutable X uh, breaking down the weekly. Not, look, not a great looking chart, all red on the radar. So uh, similarly, now Binance Coin holding up here. You know, the rumor was Binance was selling their Bitcoin to prop up their BNB. Uh, it's not clear what's going on here. When in doubt, stay out. I would just leave that alone. Uh, we've got uh, Opus here. Not really familiar with Opus. Uh, so let's just kind of keep moving on. Unify is an interesting project. And uh, let's go back to a daily on Unify. So it's sort of in an upward, a new upward trend channel, you know, so I would wait for this. So this is my thought process. Okay, new upward trend channel, but I want to wait for ERI, TSI, signal and bell. That's our mantra. Once we have other criteria and using the trade success worksheet. So, you know, in this one would be, is it in a, uh, uh, upward trending pattern is the is the price above 21 and 50 day EMA is price above you know rising support trend line and that would qualify here rising support trend line yes here and here and above its EMAs so here we're starting with these uh levels and also breaking above trend line resistance because we have that right here so that's got it's got pretty good score already without even using these other patterns. However, do we have an ERI on this? Uh, we do not. So we uncheck that. Is the TSI green and turning above 80? No, it's red and heading down. So we're not able to check any of these of our main indicators. So we'd want to wait for these to start happening and get up to a three or four score. Really, we're only at a three, which isn't enough. Okay. So for that, again, uh, if you'd like to find out where to find that um, you can go to moonstream.io slash trade checklist. But uh, at the moment, that site redirect is not working. All right, I'm working to my way down to HBAR, you guys. I believe it's in our list. Uh, if not, we'll add it. We looked at Serum. We looked at Air. These are uh, not great looking charts. Air looks better than Serum, though. I'll move that up. So let's take a look at HBAR here and see... Let's see, where do we want to look at that? We have it on BitCat, we have it on MEXT, the futures. And now, oh, David, you can't change your mind. Now that we're pulling it up, uh, we'll look at it on Binance, uh, Hedera. Okay, so add this to the watch list because it seems to come up every week. But, uh, you know, I mean, what do you see, David? So... Yeah, I mean, I we see uh, an early reversal indicator fired, but it didn't confirm. It was a small arrow. We did not get the TSI above twenty, so that would what that's the the validator. So this is not a buy. You you need to see this, and I would set alerts on this. You want to see ERI TSI minimum, minimum, and and then ideally signal and bell. So we have signal red, we have the trend indicator red. So this is not a buy at this point. All mostly red on the radar. So you know once you get once you get uh, good at reading these, you can just scan through here and go yes, yes, no, no, and and basically you're dead to me until this happens. So that's really the attitude you have to have. Be emotionless. Learn to trust these indicators. Uh, they are so powerful, and they have gotten us in and out of all these market highs and lows. And especially as we learn the nuances of these, even better, uh, even more confidence in these. They'll guide us into the next uh, highs and lows. So what am I looking at here? I see a trend channel here forming on uh, all of this. So, you know, again, keep in mind, if as soon as you can draw a, a new trend channel, the better. So this is still in a downtrending channel, H bar. To be honest, you know, I would like to see it start heading higher. Now, this technically is putting in higher lows, Right, so this could be starting. Wait, why do I have this here? I hit the wrong button. Uh, sorry, I didn't realize I forgot there's a head and shoulders indicator, but I didn't mean to push it. 
uh, the I meant to hit uh, push this button. So this could be a new trend channel, but it's kind of a weak one. We I would be interested in H bar when it's above this downward trending channel, possibly signifying a new upward trending channel. And I'd also like to see it, I'd say above this prior resistance right there at, you know, so for me, my alert will be at 10 cents. And there you go. We don't have to look at this thing again. So basically put your hand up, say, bye, Felicia. Uh, you're dead to me until you're above 10 cents or 0 0.10. And then buy question mark. The question mark means go reevaluate. Look for your indicators. But for now, uh, you know, certainly if you're in this, David, uh, if having you know, dollar cost averaging a little bit uh, on this little trend line. But again, we don't have we have a, a week ERI a couple days ago. We don't have a TSI. You could look at the weekly. Weekly looks bearish. Looks like it's coming down. So I'd be suspect of this support line. Uh, you'd rather buy down here at lower levels on bullish turns of our signals. Yes or yes? Yeah. Um, so uh, same thing as XLM bottoming pattern. That's right, you guys. Um, well, so you know what? This is uh, actually we're kind of an hour and 40, 40, an hour and 15 minutes in. I do have a, a call I have to prepare for. So I'm going to let you guys go. And uh, of course, if you want to join us for more in-depth breakdown of these markets here wednesday's class for the uh, moonstream class just go to moonstream.io slash m3 you can find out more about this and getting our great indicators included read some commentary from people in the group this is our flagship active trader program it's one of the best out there's uh best out there top three percent we are told from some of our students so check that out here and uh, you'll get daily updates and uh, weekly live classes like this one. We unpack the markets at a little deeper level here in the tomorrow's class. So, all right, everyone, have a great week. And for those of you in M3, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow in class. And uh, we'll dive a little deeper into everything. All right, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.